everyone. Welcome back to my channel, Chelsea and Family. It has been a long time since I posted a video. Just, I think you guys can understand just so much going on right now in the world. And um, when the kids got out of school and had to stay out of school, things were just busy. They still are very busy and just trying to entertain and the days just fly by. I don't need to explain, you moms understand. <laughs> so uh, yeah, things have been crazy, but I did really wanna make this video for you. This is a four month postpartum slash baby update video. Cause this little girl is four and a half months now. You say hi? You say hi? <laughs> So, I just wanted to kind of update you guys on all the new stuff going on with her. So, she went to the doctor last Tuesday, which was a week ago, and she was 10 pounds, 10 ounces. So, she has doubled her birth weight, and when she was born, I believe she was let's see, it's on there, about 18 inches long. And she's now 22 and a half inches long. So she's grown, but she's still pretty small. And um, so one thing that's kind of going on with her, and I didn't experience this with my other two kids, but I hear that it's pretty normal. And we don't know when it will go away. Usually after a year, they want to get it checked out by an eye doctor. But so, if, Olivia, you look at the camera. So this eye looks a little bit smaller, um, but it gets really goopy. And I was told it's a clogged um, tear duct, I think. So when it's like trying to work, it just, it just oozes, I guess. I, I don't know. It seems confusing to me, um, probably just because I've never dealt with it before. But it gets super goopy. There's times she wakes up and her eyes completely sealed shut. And we have to just get a warm rag and loosen it up. And then um, at night, I've kind of been putting a little bit of Aquaphor just like on the corner of it. And then a little bit underneath. And that kind of helps it to not get stuck together. Um, and it helps it to not just be so red and irritated from being wiped all the time. It's not acting up right now, but just at certain points of the day, it will start acting up. And there's times when she like goes to cry and her eye just has thick green goop all over it. So, um, but I hear that that's normal. And around six months, if it's still like that, the doctor said he might talk about meeting with an eye doctor to see what we can do about it. Um, I have been told, and I did this to put some drops of uh, breast milk in her eye and it will make it better for a little while but then it comes back we even had eye drops prescribed we did that regularly we did all the little massages um, that they tell you to do and it just it still just keeps happening so we'll see how it is at six months um, I feel like it hasn't been too bad the past couple weeks lately but um, you never know, it could come back. So that's what's going on with that. And this little girl, and this is a huge accomplishment for me too, because I didn't follow through with this with my other two kids, but I really wanted to with her. Um, she has been all breastfed the entire four and a half months. And um, it has been a struggle for sure. And I'll talk about that a little bit more when I start doing an update on me. But, um, she has been all breastfed and so that's a huge accomplishment for me. I really wanted to do that and I plan to keep doing it, um, all up until past a year, um, if possible. Um, we did recently, and this was very emotionally hard for me to do, and I don't know why because it wasn't for the other kids, but I did actually buy some formula and this is the formula that I buy. Um, I used it for Avery and I really liked it. So I thought I'd get it for her. It's the Gerber Good Start. And it's just the um, 
Complete Nutrition and Advanced Comfort, Everyday Probiotics, uh, Digestive Health and Immune Support, Easy to Digest, Brain and Eye Development. Um, it's just, I don't know, I really liked it with Avery, so I decided to get it for her again. And the reason I ended up getting formula is because this little girl eats so much. Like, literally, she wants me to feed her every hour and a half or she puts up a fit. <laughs> And because of that, I have no time to pump. She does not allow me to pump at all. And I can't be with her all the time. There are going to be times, like later today, um, that her dad is going to have her for a couple hours while I'm at a doctor's appointment. And he doesn't have anything to feed her because I, I just I physically cannot pump because she just takes everything as soon as my boobs even fill up the slightest. <laughs> um, so... I did get the formula just for when dad has her and so far since I've gotten that, which I got that about a month ago, she's only had two bottles of it in all. And the second bottle wasn't even like a full bottle. I used it um, with her cereal because we did actually just try yesterday for the first time using baby cereal and we added a little bit of bananas in. Hi. That was fast. So we started her yesterday, which was Sunday, on baby cereal, and um, we added a little bit of bananas in. So this is the baby oatmeal that we use. I use that for my other kids, too. I tried all different kinds. You know, I tried the organic kinds and everything like that, but I, I don't know. Gerber's just... A well-known brand and I like like down here like how it tells you like the stages um, of like when you can upgrade to other food and stuff and like this is supported sitter right now which she is she's a supported sitter but I just I just like the Gerber brand altogether um, I do like other brands too but it's just it's easy to find it's everywhere and um, so we stick with that. We also got her foods like these. Um, I have banana one and over here an apple one. I don't know if you can see. Oh, and there's a little bit of baby spit up for you. <laughs> uh, really loved the food and she did really good her first time eating. Usually, you know, they like to play with it and spit it out a ton, which she did a little bit, but for the most part, she really liked it, and she actually, like, kept grabbing my hand to pull the spoon in um, every time I would take it away. So, um, I do have a clip. Oh, she's getting excited. Mm. First time with cereal. Yum, yum. <laughs> give me more, Mom. Give me more. Mm. You like that, Olivia? Is that good? <laughs> so good. Ah, now I'm gonna eat my hand. <laughs> yeah, the smile. I guess between four and six months is a good time to start feeding them foods. Um, that's what my doctor said, and I. It's funny because I still have to ask these questions even though I've had two other kids. But it just feels like so long ago that I started feeding them food that I don't really remember. I do remember with James, I tried one time to feed him food at three months and he just wasn't ready. So I think I waited till about four and a half, five months and I started feeding him baby cereal in the morning. And I used a little bit of formula in that just for like some milk to thin it out and... Um, that's how you're supposed to make it anyway. And then I just like to add a couple spoonfuls of the food to it for flavor. So yeah, the food, um, we're really excited to start trying. Huh? Maybe it'll keep you full longer. Keep you full longer. Yeah, she's a, she's a good girl. She's a good girl, huh? 
And then next, um, I wanted to say that she is officially rolling over. Yes, you are now hazardous to leave on the bed because you roll over. So <clears throat> she doesn't roll completely over. She does kind of get stuck like on her shoulder. Um, so it, she's not completely like on her face yet, but she's almost all the way. She, I mean, she's all the way over. Don't get me wrong. She's on her belly. Just her arm is kind of tucked underneath. And she doesn't know how to roll back onto her back yet. She just started rolling over like last week, I think. So um, that's a new thing, huh? And she loves her tummy time. She has a really strong neck, surprisingly. She's always kind of had a strong neck, but um, she holds herself up really well when she's on her tummy. Um, so her favorite, one of her favorite things to do in the morning is we get on the floor to change her diaper and I'll lay her little mat down, which I just have like a basic mat, just like one of these. It's not too big, but it's perfect for her. And it actually comes with a little pillow. So we'll put um, her on the floor after changing her diaper. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, I love you. But um, we put her on the floor with the mat and change her diaper and all that. And then we'll turn on Mickey Mouse for her. Mickey Mouse Clubhouse is her favorite show. She'll sit there and watch it and she just starts getting all smiley and she'll try and like talk back when Mickey's talking and asking questions. It's the cutest thing ever. I'll have to get a clip of it and put it probably in like my next update video, which I am not going to promise any certain time because with how chaotic my life is, I have no idea when I can put another one. I'm going to try and do one at six months. So, um, but I will try and get a video of her watching Mickey Mouse because it's super cute. And she just gets all smiley and she started giggling. Hi, huh, baby. She started giggling. And she started using a little teething toy, a little teething rattle. She just gnaws on like these little balls, like the texture of them and everything. I think it feels good on her gums. So she is teething. She hasn't broken a tooth and she probably won't for a couple more months. But she gnaws on her hand a lot, drools like crazy. And you could just tell certain times when she's really uncomfortable. Huh. Yes. Yes. You get in this I did. You get in this I did. So, um, yeah, she doesn't giggle all the time, but we have heard her do it a couple times. Like if we're, you know, like when the first time we heard her do it, her dad was like making noises on her belly and then his beard was just like tickling her and she just thought it was the funniest thing. And then I found a tickle spot under here. And when I do that, um, sometimes she gets a little giggle going. And she likes to babble a lot, like she'll talk back and I'll put another clip in here of her talking. Oh yeah, you tell me all about it. Anybody else talk? Uh -huh. Did I show the that? Yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I got your feet. I got your feet. Yeah. She, um, loves it when I sing to her. So I can't sing worth diddly. Um, I just, I don't have a singing voice, but for some reason, when I just sing to her, she'll calm down, she'll smile. Huh, you like when mama sings songs. And then um, the first time I noticed that she loved singing, her brother was actually singing her, uh, you are my sunshine, my only sunshine. You make me happy when skies are gray. 
You'll never know, dear, how much I love you. What are you doing? Huh? Are you getting frustrated? You went to Binky? She is a Binky girl, too. Uh, my other daughter, Avery, she was a Binky girl. She is about to turn four, and we did not get rid of the Binky until... Sometime last year, I think. Or maybe it was the beginning of this year. I don't really remember. Maybe it was last year. I think it was last year. Shortly after the summer. So, she had it for a long time. But um, I'm really hoping that she won't have it for a long time. Just because it, like, moves their teeth. And um, we learned that it actually can change the form of their mouth and their face if they don't stop it in time. Usually around, they want the binky gone by four years old. Um, before three would be better, but by four years old is when the permanent damage starts happening. So we were really, really on it about getting rid of that binky. So when she had her last binky and had chewed the nipple almost all the way off, uh, we threw it away and we told her if she could go a night without having the binky that we would get something special for her, which we did. And she actually did so much better without it than we thought. Like she didn't have a night where she would fuss and want it or anything. So, um, it's all about when they're ready. But, um, when we asked our doctor, you know, what's, a good way to stop the binky because we just couldn't like she would scream all night long if we tried to take it away or say that it was lost or anything like that and it would be miserable um but the doctor said you could throw her like a little party like a bye bye binky party and you can um actually have her physically throw it away and take the trash out to the dumpster with you so she knows that it's gone and then you get her a couple presents something to make her feel better and um, sometimes that works. Sometimes just getting rid of it when she's not looking. You know, you might have a hard night. I mean, I don't know. Every kid's different. Like my son, he only had a binky till about a year old. And then he wanted nothing to do with it. So, I don't know. It just depends on your kid. And you know your kid better than anyone. And whatever you might think would work. But anyways, went way off topic. But... Uh, I just wanted to throw that out there in case some of you moms are struggling to get rid of the binky because I know I did too. Um, so the next thing that we're working on with her is sitting up. We need to get her a bumbo, one of those little chairs where they, their legs go through and they completely sit up and yeah, huh? Gotta get you sitting up. She's really good about wanting to stand. Like her legs are strong and she wants to stand. She wants to stand more than she wants to sit. And so I think getting her to actually sit without like stretching her back out like that, like she likes to do, you've seen a couple times her scoot down, um, cause she just stretches her whole body out and she doesn't want to sit up, but we're working on it, huh? We just prop her up with pillows or prop her up in the corner of the couch and sit with her. So we're working on it. We are working on it. And then, sorry, I'm looking at my little cheat sheet down here. You guys know I usually have to have a cheat sheet. Otherwise, I'll completely ramble on about topics I didn't even want to talk about and leave out the ones I did. <laughs> so, she is now in a size 2 diaper, which is huge for us because she started out in a preemie diaper. And so, she's moved up in diaper size twice now. And she is now in three to six month clothing. And she also fits in like zero to three months too because she's so little. But she um, it is starting to fit in three to six months too. And that was a big thing too because in clothing she went up in a couple sizes, two to three sizes. She started out in preemie, went up to newborn, huh? And then newborn started getting a little snug on her and we went to zero to three months. And then we discovered just a couple nights ago that three to six months actually fits her pretty well too. So she's growing perfect. So 
this last thing I want to mention, and I'm not mentioning this to be controversial or anything like that, because honestly, I'm right smack dab in the middle of it. Um, vaccines. I want to know from you moms, are you for vaccines or against them? I never really thought about them until this whole coronavirus thing happened. And um, which, from my personal opinion, totally okay if you're for it or not. I refuse the vaccine for that, just like I refuse the flu vaccine. But I do think that some vaccines, I'm not anti-vaccine because there's some vaccines that I think are appropriate to have. Um, and I'm just trying to look into them a little bit more. Um, my doctor kind of got a little defensive when I asked about them. Uh, so clearly he's super pro vaccine. Um, I just asked for the information on him, which they usually provide me with anyway. I didn't know he had brought it in already. And then he pointed to it and I just told him I was looking more into them. I just want to know more about the risks. I want to know more about, um, what's being put into my child. And, um, yeah, so I'm kind of just right smack dab in the middle of it. I'm really, really, I don't know, just trying to look into it. That's the best way I could put it. Uh, she does, she is up to date with her vaccine, so I have not denied any so far. I just want to know more information about them. That's all. And so I just want to know from you guys, are you pro against or where I'm at right smack dab in the middle and maybe why? Uh, just for my own um, study, I guess, or uh, other, I like to hear other people's opinions on it. Because honestly, I don't know too much about them. And I should, being a mom of three. But I, do, I don't. I have never really been one to research things um, until now. I really want to see more. Because I worry about what's being put into my body. And I should be worried about what's being put into my kids and take a stand for them if I truly don't feel like they need something. Um, and I have not reached that point yet. So I think everything she's gotten so far is completely necessary to my knowledge. Um, the information on them to my knowledge, I guess. But anyways, are you pro, against, right in the middle? And why? Just... I'm not taking a poll or anything like that. I'm just personally interested in what people have to say. So that's the end of baby update. Huh? Yeah. Yeah. We're going to have to go make you some food soon, huh? Are you getting antsy? Are you getting antsy? You want your dinky? You dropped it over here. It wasn't nipple side down on the carpet. Just so you know. Okay, so the update on me, not too many updates. Um, I have been kind of on and off hormonal, um, emotional, not, not all the time, just like on and off emotional. There's times that I just look at my kids and I start crying because not in a bad way, but look at them like, Wow. <laughs> like, I don't know. It's just an overwhelming feeling of love, I guess. Um, and an overwhelming feeling of responsibility, <laughs> especially when I became my son's teacher. <laughs> then it really hit me like, like it was, I don't know. It was just the craziest feeling. And I don't know if it was because of all the hormones, because it was right. It all happened right when I brought her home from the hospital. Just a couple weeks later. So, oh, what are you doing? Might have to pass you to daddy. Huh? You want daddy to put you to sleep, baby? She was tired. She wanted to be rocked to sleep. So, daddy's taking care of that while I finish this up. So, anyways. Sh uh, yeah, just hormonal. And um, I am finally getting a normal cycle back. I've only had two since... She's been born, um, topic of birth control. Um, I will not be going on birth control and my husband has talked about a vasectomy, um, but we've kind of tossed the idea up and down, not because we want to have more kids. Um, that just might 
the other ways to go about it. I don't personally want birth control. I don't like what it does to my body. I've tried a couple different ones. Um, and I just don't, I don't like it. So we're being careful in the best way possible right now till we figure out officially what we're going to do. Um, my husband still might go with the vasectomy. We just got to figure out some insurance stuff first. Um, cause yeah, as of right now, I've had this talk with you guys before we are done. Um, I have tossed up the idea of maybe in the future, maybe three to four years from now having one more and he has shut down <laughs> that option, uh, several times. He wants to just raise the ones that we have, which is fine with me. Totally fine with me. I'm so happy to have the kids that I have and I'm good with stopping if he wants to be done. So, um, yeah, um, my, a friend of mine told me about this book that I want to get. Sorry, it feels like I have a piece of like makeup in my eye or something. That's why I keep rubbing my eyes. But, um, she told me about this book that she used forever before her husband, you know, ended up getting his stuff done. Um, that she used for birth control and it's called taking control of my fertility and she swears by it. So, um, I want to look into getting that book and just researching or reading it and just see what it has to say and how to go about it. It's basically just knowing your body and, um, knowing when you're fertile. So, you know, stay away from sex those days and, um, taking your temperature, uh, all that stuff, just knowing the uh, right times that you can have sex and when you can't. So um, I want to look into that because that sounds probably more so what we're looking for um, for the time being. And she told me that I could get that book off Amazon. So if you guys are interested in looking more into something like that, it's called Taking Control of my fertility um, and just look it up on Amazon and see what you can find uh, a couple friends of mine swear by it so I'll look into it <laughs> and then back to the breastfeeding thing so I have struggled with my breast milk when it first came in so the first month to two months that she was born I had so much milk coming in that it was really hard to keep track of and she was in the NICU for like a month. So, um, it was, I had to do a lot of pump, pumping because I didn't have her actually physically feeding on me at all times because I wasn't at the hospital at all times. When I was at the hospital, I did mostly breastfeeding. But when I was home, I had to pump like every couple hours and I just had so much milk coming through and then when she came home, it was shortly after she came home from the hospital, um, she didn't eat that much. She didn't eat as much as I was producing. And with the kids all being home and just being pulled in every which direction, I was really bad about pumping after feeding, um, which is really important to do, uh, especially when you have that much milk. So um, I ended up getting mastitis and that was very painful it was so painful but like your boobs were full like all the time and you would pump and get maybe an ounce and then I started getting like the burning sensation around the outside it became red and rashy and um it was so painful and I couldn't get a hold of the lactation nurse at the hospital that I had spoken with while my daughter was in the hospital um she didn't call me back till way later that day and she finally prescribed me antibiotics. But in the meantime, before that, I just needed some sort of relief. And there's actually this oil from doTERRA. I don't have it on me right now. But it's called Adaptive. And um, I used that just kind of on the outer part of my um boob not like on the nipple part but like on the um outside of it where especially where it was burning and really inflamed because um in that oil there is copaiba which is really good for pain and inflammation 
And then there was a few different oils in there that help with um, like antifungal and stuff like that. And I believe in mastitis, um, there's some sort of like blockage or uh, you could get like a bacterial. And by the time I got the antibiotics the next day, my mastitis was gone. Um, the redness, the burning, the intense pain was, it was gone. It had been lifted. I think the next day I had like a little bit of pain in just one certain area, but it wasn't like the whole boob like the day before. So that was amazing. I didn't even end up taking the antibiotics. Cause I didn't need to, but after, um, I had mastitis, my production did cut like way in half and I struggled to pump because there was hardly anything coming out. And then there was times that I felt like I was starving my child because she'd be so upset. Um, when she ate off both boobs and she wasn't satisfied, um, but the one good thing about that was I knew she was getting enough because she was spitting up a lot. And I thought there was actually something that was through my breast milk that she was rejecting. So I talked to the doctor about it and he said, no, she's eating too much. And when her stomach starts like digesting it or something like that, it's pushing everything that it can't fit like out. And so she, she was spitting up at least an ounce or two. So that made me feel good knowing that she was still getting enough from me. Um, and she's not underweight or anything like that. So I was able to provide for her, but I have tried several different things to keep my milk going. Oats being one of them, leafy greens. Um, I looked up like foods that are good to help support breast milk and tried some stuff in there and I, everything goes in phases. So it would start increasing a lot and then, and I would still be doing the same thing and then it would start decreasing again to like almost nothing and I'm like what is going on like that was just working so then I tried um I had seen a post on Facebook about somebody that drank a couple body armors which is like these and um and they were able to pump like nine ounces and I'm like well that's awesome I'm gonna try it so I started drinking these and I haven't really ever stopped because it did start, these did help a little bit. Um, I wasn't pumping too much more. Um, I think I was pumping at least like an ounce more than usual. Um, but she was getting enough. Like she was fully satisfied after eating off both sides. And so I'm like, good. Well, even if it, I'm not pumping extreme amounts, she's getting what's filling her up. And then it started dipping down again, even when I was drinking those, but I believe those helped just get what I was getting. Um, so I haven't stopped drinking those. I don't really know what's in them that helps with breast milk, um, production. I think the, the coconut water that's in it, cause I've seen people say, um, that they drink coconut water to help with their breast milk supply. So, um, I still continue to drink those. It also has like amazing stuff in it to keep you hydrated. Um, yeah, like coconut water, electrolytes, antioxidants, uh, B vitamins. And so I think that all those nutrients and stuff help as well. But ultimately my breast milk is doing great again. Um, and it all started after I started taking, and I'm not just saying this to sell the product because I'm being 100% honest and you can ask anybody who's breastfeeding and takes these, um, that this helps, but I got the lifelong vitality vitamins through doTERRA. I can show you them as like 
all this nutrition in the back. And then this is part of it too. And then that one. Sorry if those are coming out blurry. And then I also started taking the PB Assist and um, my milk production has been steady. It has not dipped down at all. Um, I also drink protein shakes. Protein shakes have a lot of um, like vitamins and nutrients in them too. But I take those every day and just the mass amount of uh, like vitamins and like nutrition in this set it's just supported my breast milk the entire time and I've been taking them only for a couple of weeks but um my milk production has not dipped down and if I was able to pump I'm sure I'd be pumping quite a bit but like I said she eats every hour and a half so I don't really get a chance to do that but um so even though we do use the formula um for you know to add in her food and just when my dad's here with her or I do have a heart surgery coming up and when I'm in that surgery and recovering whoever's taking care of her is going to have to feed her and I don't see myself being able to pump anytime soon um that much milk so um it's okay if you have to supplement with formula I know it's a uh, kind of a struggle when they're you know, you go all these months with just pure breast milk and you know how good it is for them. And then to be like, oh, I really hate to give them this formula when I really don't have to on a usual day. But um, I've come around to it. It was a really hard decision at first, but I've come around to it and um, it's working pretty good for her. She likes it. <laughs> I guess it's just because it's a different flavor or whatever. Um. So past, you know, the breast milking part, um, breast milking part, do you hear me right now? This is what happens to me. So, um, another thing I wanted to ask about, uh, because I struggle with this a lot and it's been affecting me really bad, like every day, um, because I do breastfeed all day long and she's like, down here, I have really, really bad posture. I catch myself hunched over like this all the time. And even when I use the boppy pillow, you know, the pillow that like wraps around you and then they can lay on the pillow. Even then I find myself slouching over up here and my back, I just wake up every single morning with my back hurting so bad. Um, and I can take care of it for a little while using my oils and my uh, deep blue lotion and taking Copaiba internally um, to help with that inflammation. I do want to get turmeric too because turmeric helps with inflammation. But overall, my back hurts. And I have a kind of a bad lower back anyway from a car accident years ago. Um, and I didn't start feeling the effects of it until a couple years later. And so I have back lower back bad lower back problems um, because of that. So that just doesn't help. I've just been in a lot of pain from that. Um, weight gain. So I know a lot of moms struggle with weight gain after children and some don't. I was one that did not. Um, with my first two, I bounced back. I started my pre-pregnancy weight with both my first two was 104 and I had never weighed anything over 110 um, not being pregnant and I know I'm a little bit older my birthday is tomorrow by the way uh, I'm gonna be 28 so you know I'm reaching my 30s but I'm not quite there I'm so young um, so I don't know if it's my age or the fact that I had my third kid, but I did not bounce back this time. I thought I was going to. Uh, so I gave birth to her at 136 pounds, I think. And and I just want to remind you guys, I am four foot eleven. So, um, you know, my 
healthy weight is supposed to be, you know, between 100 and 105, I think. Uh, last I checked, it was around that. So, uh, I gave birth to her at like 136, 137, which was normal. I gave birth to Avery at 136 also. Uh, I wasn't too worried about that. And then I dropped down to 124 after having her. Like the first couple weeks after having her, I was 124. And I kept up eating what I was eating to, you know, help with my breast milk and all that. And then I started gaining. And I was stuck at 128 for a while. And I was like, okay, I gained four pounds. That's not like huge, but I want to be losing. And I had so many moms tell me, don't worry about the weight in the first year. You know, you can get it off anytime, which is true. But, you know, you understand. I'm sure you understand that it's kind of hard when you feel really big and you're not um, bouncing back to the point where you can fit back in your clothes again. You're having to go out and buy all new stuff because you can't fit in anything. Um, and that's where I'm at. So I was at 128 for a while and was trying to lose, but not like I wasn't like actively trying to lose. Like I was like changing little things here and there, but, um, and I guess I'm still kind of like that. I haven't really changed from that. I've been trying to change more and more things. And when my kids don't wake up at six in the morning, I try and um, do like some workouts and stuff when my husband leaves for work, but uh, I keep gaining and I'm not changing my eating habits into eating worse. I've been changing them, substituting them, cutting back on sugar, cutting back on fats and stuff like that. And I'm gaining. I think I have been around 132, 133 now, and that's huge for me because I have never weighed that much um, not being pregnant, and the fact that I keep gaining and I don't know why I'm gaining, uh, it's kind of depressing, <laughs> but I'm trying to not think too much about it. Think more of, I'm providing for my child right now. I am providing the nutrients she needs. I can continue to make changes. Um, and in time, I won't always be um, this big. And I know maybe in the camera right now, I don't look that big too. But if you look back at pictures of me when I was, I don't know, a couple years ago, I was a lot thinner and I know that weight doesn't even matter. You know, it shouldn't even matter. And I tell myself that it's like this inner battle in me because I hate getting dressed in the morning because nothing fits right. Um, but then I have to keep reassuring myself. My kids love me. My husband loves me. My God loves me. And my friends don't care about my weight. So, why should I care so much? Yes, on health aspect. As long as I'm healthy, that's what matters. And I am being healthy. I eat healthy for the most part. Um, I'm drinking healthy. I don't drink alcohol. Every now and then I'll drink a soda. If I do drink soda, I usually just like take a few sips off my husband's. Um, and those body armors have quite a bit of sugar in them, but that's really the only drink I drink that has a lot of sugar. My coffee in the morning, I've cut back sugar in that a lot. I don't use creamer. Um, I mean, I will every now and then to kind of change it up, but, um, I try and buy the healthier natural creamers that don't have as much sugar. And, um, but when I use like half and half and sugar, I'll try and just do like a teaspoon, a teaspoon and a half of sugar. And, um, I'm getting used to that. So that's good. I'm hoping in time I can just completely get rid of the sugar and just have a little splash of cream in it. So I didn't mean to go off on a whole weight tangent. Um, but I know that a lot of you moms can probably relate to that. It's this horrible inner batter uh, pattern. You guys, I can't speak anymore. Um, it's a horrible inner battle that we deal with. Um, speaking for most of us, I know not all women feel that way and that's totally okay. If you're comfortable in your own skin, then you're comfortable. That is totally fine. 
Um, but it's just an inner battle that I have with myself. Um, and I think my height has a lot to do with it because I am shorter. Um, weight shows on me more. Um, and I'm trying, you know, and it doesn't even matter about weight. I could go tone up and still weigh the same amount, but as long as I'm comfortable in my own skin, that's what matters. And right now I'm not, I wish I was, and I try and convince myself that I am all the time, but I'm just not. Um, but that's just something that I'm working on and it will all come together in time. Um, there shouldn't be any rush on it. So that's that. And, um, another question I have for you moms and see things were different for me with my other two kids because we were always living with family. My kids never had their own room or anything like that. And even if they did have their own room, it wasn't until they were older, um, and out of the crib stage. But Right now, Olivia sleeps in a co-sleeper next to me. And I know there's no rush for this. She could sleep in that co-sleeper next to me the first year of her life. I don't care. I'm just curious as, um, I'm curious with you other parents, when did you start putting your baby in their own room, in their own bed? Well, I mean, I guess co-sleeper is their own bed, but you know, like in a crib. Um, do you do it for, so they don't just get used to sleeping with you all the time? When did you switch them over? Um, cause my kids, like I said, because we lived with family and stuff, our kids slept with us for a long time. Um, and when we moved into our own place, it was kind of hard to break that habit at first. There had been several nights that they wanted to be in bed with us. They still do. I mean, and I guess a lot of kids do, you know, in the middle of the night, they'll come climb in bed with us. But, um, and they just now, okay, so my son is six and my daughter is about to turn four. And we just now gave them their own rooms. They have shared a room because they wanted each other in the room. It was just comforting to have each other in the room. They weren't by themselves. And, um, they had bunk beds and just this last week we separated the rooms. We gave James his own room, um, and he was so excited about it and his room looks awesome. And so it was fun for us to put it together for him because we haven't been able to put rooms together for kids. It was even fun when we set up that other room that James has now with nursery stuff. Um, but we figured Olivia is not sleeping in her own room yet and, so her girly stuff should go in Olivia's or Avery's girly room and James should have his own boy room and he's loving it. He actually even has like a little sticky note on his door that says a hundred days, uh, no one enters my secret room. <laughs> I don't know where that came from, but he's super silly. So anyways, I just want to know when did your baby start sleeping in their own room in a crib? And when do you, reasonings, is there any reasoning why you decided to put them in earlier than a year? Um, or even after a year. So I will stop rambling on. I feel like I'm rambling on, but there was just so much I had to cover. So much has happened like in the last four months that she's been born and I haven't done a video in a long time so I just wanted to cover everything um but let me know um the the questions that I asked you guys about vaccines about posture when breastfeeding and about the crib and the room so let me know your guys' input on that because I would love to hear it but anyways guys I'm gonna um end this video here and I hope you all enjoyed this video and if you have any questions or advice it's all welcome as long as it's positive and uh, I will hopefully see you guys in another video soon <laughs>